I'm Julianne Hill, uh, GRDC's Regional Cropping Solutions Coordinator for the Western Region. We're here today in this massive big shed at uh, David Campbell's property near Scadden for the Soils Masterclass which was initiated by the Esperance Regional um, Cropping Solutions Network. We've also got some special people coming along bringing together a suite of people that can talk to you today. We've also got Nigel Metz who's coming in a minute and he'll be talking about CTF and some of the uh, results he got from the 2014 Regional Cropping Solutions program that was funded through Esperance Zone. The project was done in the uh, Esperance region over three different sites and essentially it was initiated by the, uh, the local RCSN as a bit of feedback of one reason is to investigate that nitrogen efficiency dynamics but also to continue the conversation uh, about controlled traffic and that's sort of an integration of uh, the uh, GRDC controlled traffic investment with the Department of Agriculture uh, and Food Western Australia so that the projects they're running um, in terms of helping farmers with update uh, uptake of CTF as well as uh, the uh, subsoil constraints uh, from DAFRA as well. Um, so they were sort of key to assisting with the project and the RCSN obviously working with CEPWA for the, uh, the local trial work we did. We had our high rainfall sand plain, uh, we had our medium rainfall sort of mallee soils and then in the low rainfall area uh, we had a, a sort of a heavier mallee soil as well. And essentially we went looking for a place in the paddock that we were pretty confident had never been driven on. So we were looking for a non-crop affecting obstacle. And what that ended up turning out to be was a power pole, because obviously uh, things like bush uh, or, or remnant vegetation affects the edge of the crop. So we looked at uh, the effect of compaction coming out from the distance of the power pole. So initially that first few sort of five or six metres in from the power pole, we knew had only ever been driven on in certain spots, so that became our controlled traffic spot, and then we simulated compaction coming out. And then finally we compared that to just paddock random stuff um, as you spread out further into the paddock that may or may not have been driven on in the past. The trial results over all three sites showed that uh, we had a yield response in all sites as well as a biomass response. And that response varied uh, in terms of uh, it's probably its rainfall potential in terms of the percentage but we had anywhere between sort of 18 about 40 odd percent yield gain for where the soil had never ever been driven on. So what that sort of brings to mind is that um, basically uh, the machinery that we've been driving over our paddocks over the years has caused some sort of subsoil historic compaction. So that really starts to make you think about well what would our paddocks be like if they'd never been driven on in terms of their soil quality and also how do we then stop driving on parts of the paddock i.e. confine the traffic in a controlled manner going forward. The key message is um, we need to sort of take a step back and first of all before we get excited about the possible yield advantage you may have if your soil had never been compacted is you've got to confine that traffic to the tram lines and once you've done that then you can start to investigate how might we decompact that historic compaction and that leads into the GRDC's next round of investment that is looking at subsoil constraints and ameliorating some of those subsoil compaction issues that we've had in the past. Um, but before we start to address those, you must confine your traffic to the same spot, otherwise you're just going to undo any investment in resurrecting that compacted layer.